In this video, we're going to have a look at deriving the identities for cos theta and i sine theta in terms of the exponential function and have a look at putting them into an exam context. So the first thing I'm going to do is propose to you that a half e to the i theta plus e to the minus i theta is identical to cos theta. And let's do the proof of that now. So the proof... Well, let's write them as their non-exponential counterparts. So that's a half, and that becomes cos theta plus i sine theta plus cos of minus theta plus i sine of minus theta. And now, as if by magic, two set of axes appear, because we're now going to draw the sine and the cos function to do the next stage of simplification. So let's start by doing the cos function. So it looks something like that, and goes on forever, so I'll do a dotted line there. And like that. Okay, so notice that the cos function is symmetrical about the y-axis. That means that any value for the cos of an angle, cos of negative that angle, has exactly the same cosine. So from this, we can deduce that cos of minus theta is exactly the same as cos of theta. And that's helpful because it helps us simplify this term here, so we can replace that with cos theta. So we're going to do that in just a second. Before we do that, though, we're going to do the same thing for the sine function. So drawing the sine function, there's one half cycle of it, and dotted line goes on forever. And so on. So notice with the sine function that we've got the sine of an angle, so that angle there, because of the symmetry of the graph, sine of any angle, if we go for negative sine of that angle, we'll see that it's exactly the same distance from the x-axis, i.e. we can conclude that sine of minus theta equals the negative sine of theta because of the symmetry of the graph. And... Just for the record, you don't need to know this for the purpose of the A-level, but actually a function that has this property that's symmetrical about the y-axis is called an even function. So if an even function is where f of minus theta equals f of theta, i.e. symmetrical about the y-axis. This function here which has rotational symmetry about the origin. So this part of the curve here is this curve rotated 180 degrees anti-clockwise or clockwise. This is called an odd function. So an odd function is where, minus, is where f of minus theta equals minus f of theta. And again, you don't need to know these for the purposes of the A-level. However, they are just useful to know for when you do your degree in maths or go on to higher level mathematical studies in whatever degree you do. So, right, we've got this here now. So we can use these facts. We can use the fact that cos theta is an even function and sine theta is an odd function to simplify these two terms here. So, going back to it, our previous line of mathematics is now equal to a half cos theta plus i sine theta and using the two identities we've just derived plus cos theta take i sine theta bit of cancellation there i sine theta take i sine theta equals a half of two cos theta equals cos theta. So there we have it. We've just proved this identity here. 
So let's do the equivalent for I sine theta. So I'm going to propose to you that a half e to the i theta take e to the minus i theta is identical to i sine theta. So the proof, well, a half e to the i theta take e to the minus i theta. And writing that in CIS form, cos plus i sine theta form, we get a half cos theta plus i sine theta take cos of minus theta plus i sine of minus theta. And that's equal to, so using the symmetry of the sine and cos graphs that we did before, like we did before, cos theta plus i sine theta, take all of cos theta minus i sine theta. And we'll see we get a bit of cancellation there. Cos theta, take cos theta, equals a half of 2i sine theta equals i sine theta and there's the proof so the two identities that were proved just to write them down to summarize we've got a half e to the i theta plus e to the minus i theta equals cos theta and a half e to the i theta minus e to the minus i theta is identical to i sine theta. And the way I remember this one, I remember that, because it's sometimes difficult to remember which one you plus for and which one you subtract for, I always remember that sine, the s, is the subtract. So s for sine and s for subtract. So let's leave those at the top of the screen there and have a go at a question that could possibly be asked in an exam. So there it is there, show that 32 cos to the power of 6 theta is identical to cos of 6 theta plus 6 cos 4 theta plus 15 cos 2 theta plus 10. So the first thing we're going to do thirty two cos to the power of 6 theta is equal to 32 lots of and we've got our cos theta identity here. It's a half e to the i theta plus e to the minus i theta all to the power of 6 equals so let's do this half to the power of 6 first. So 32 and a half to the power of 6 is 64 or a 64th rather e to the i theta plus e the minus i theta to the power of 6 equals one half e to the i theta plus e to the minus i theta to the power of 6 so that's where we're at so far Now we're going to expand it using the binomial expansion. So the power of 6, what I'm going to do is just do a Pascal's triangle here. 1, 1, 1, 1, 2, 1, 1, 3, 3, 1, 1, 4, 6, 4, 1, 1, 5, 10, 10, 5, 1, 1, 6, 15, 20, 15, 6, 1. There we have it. The line where the first non-unit number is 6 is the power of 6. Likewise, power 5, 4, 3, 2. And that makes it quite easy. Okay. So they're the coefficients of the binomial expansion. So what we've got is 1 half. And doing the binomial expansion, we get e to the i 6 theta. That's e to the i theta to the power of 6. 
plus and the first coefficient we can see here is 6 so 6 e to the i 5 theta e to the minus i theta plus 15 e to the i 4 theta e to the minus i 2 theta plus 20 e to the i 3 theta e to the minus i 3 theta plus 15 e to the i 2 theta e to the minus i 4 theta plus 6 e to the i theta e to the minus i 5 theta plus e to the minus i 6 theta like that and simplifying so that line's equal to a half e to the i 6 theta plus 6 e to the i 4 theta adding the powers together so i 5 theta take i theta as i 4 theta plus 15 e to the i 2 theta plus 20 so e to the i 0 theta which is just 1 so 20 lots of 1 plus 15 e to the minus i 2 theta plus 6 e to the minus i 4 theta plus e to the minus i 6 theta and notice we've got terms that correspond here so i'm going to highlight blue the two terms involving e to the i 6 theta We've got this term and its corresponding negative power as well. This one here and one on its own. So let's rewrite this line. Not having rearranged anything. We're just writing the terms in a different order. Grouping the six thetas. So a half e to the i six theta plus e to the minus i 6 theta, put brackets around that, plus 6 lots of, let's group the 4 theta terms now, e to the i 4 theta, plus e to the minus i 4 theta, plus 15, let's group the 2 theta terms up together now, e to the i 2 theta, plus e to the minus i 2 theta then the 20 on its own and what you've got to realize now going back to our original identities is that this expression here e to the i 6 theta plus e to the minus i 6 theta is 2 lots of cos of 6 theta So it equals a half, and here we've got 2 cos of 6 theta, plus 6 times 2 lots of cos of 4 theta, plus 15 times 2 lots of of cos of 2 theta plus 20 on its own and halving everything equals so a half of 2 cos 6 theta is just cos of 6 theta plus 6 lots cos of 4 theta plus 15 lots cos of 2 theta half of 20 is 10 so there we have it proved exactly what we were asked to prove 
So we've showed that 32 cos of the power of 6 of theta is cos of 6 theta plus 6 cos of 4 theta plus 15 cos of 2 theta plus 10. So it's all about using these identities here to group up the correct terms in pairs in order to get the correct trigonometric form. For more videos like this, subscribe to our YouTube channel. And to find out more about our Skype tuition and revision courses, go to alevelmathsrevision.com.